Hi everybody, Neil from Knack Training here bringing you another everyday office video. Today's video is about how to create a consistently cycling film strip animation like the one you see on my screen right now. Uh, so a film strip animation is um, where a series of items goes past and what's important here is that there needs to be a loop. So at any point in time when let's say the Grand Canyon goes past, it should be able to come back around from the left, uh, excuse me, coming off to the left and coming back from the right again. So let's take a look at the steps that I took to make this animation a reality. So item number one, as you can see up here, I've got a slide where I've created just the sort of the frame of a film strip for an animation. Now the reason I did this in this way is because if I put pictures into each one of these different boxes, at some point we're going to have to get back around to the beginning, back around to this leftmost picture. So this leftmost picture will be aligned with the right side of this element right here. And so this black frame on the left will become the new black frame on the right side here. So that's why I leave that hole open. So that's our first step is to create a frame that has holes in it where I can place my pictures. Let's take a look at how I would make that happen. As you can see here, I've got an empty slide. I'm going to insert at the top of my screen going into shapes and making a long, thin rectangle, just like so. Now it's important when I build this rectangle out that um, the last element needs to go off the screen to the right so that it can smoothly come onto the screen and the picture on the left can go off the screen so it can come back around. So it's important that I have enough pictures to make it all the way to the end and then a little bit off of the end um, just for that purpose. So as you can see here, I've made a box. Maybe I want to fill that box with black and have no outline on that box. Now I'm going to cut holes in this. So I'll go back up to the insert tab, make myself another simple rectangle, and this time just make a rectangle that fits inside the previous rectangle and is kind of, you know, the normal dimensions of a picture like this. To make it easier to see, I'll go ahead and fill this with something relatively bright colored, no outline around it. And I do want to make sure that it's even spacing all the way around. So I'll just go ahead and highlight both of these elements simultaneously. Go to the Align drop-down menu and tell it to align the middle points. And let's just make sure that there's an even gap all the way around. I think that looks like uh, should be a good setup. Now I can click on to that picture, show me that, uh, that shape there that's going to be the hole in my film strip and just use control D on my keyboard to duplicate it and then just slide it over and you can see here that PowerPoint is informing me what the size of the gap was in the previous sample so that I can repeat it there. Control D, Control D, Control D, Control D. And once again, you want to make sure that at some point it hangs off of the side. That's going to be a critical part to this whole process. Go up to the top of the screen, click the Align drop down menu, and make sure that their midpoints are all aligned with one another. Uh, then make sure to highlight all the green boxes here without the black box. Go to the Align drop down menu and distribute them horizontally just so there's even gaps between each one of those things. And lastly, let's make sure that the black box goes all the way to the edge of that last green box, but no farther than that. Now the whole purpose of the green boxes in this particular layout is to cut holes in the film strip for me. So I'll just highlight all the elements here simultaneously by clicking and dragging across. And on that format tab up at the top of my screen under merge shapes, you'll see there's an option here for subtract, which is literally just cut a hole in the background shape. So that's great. That's where we need to start off from. Now there are one, two, three, four, five, six pictures. So I'll go to insert, go to pictures, and I'll go find six nice pictures. Five and six. Well, let's do this one. Okay. 
Now I'm going to want to resize these down and also I'll want to go ahead and compress them once they are sized down so that the file size isn't totally obnoxious. But let's just go ahead and get these sort of lined up first, sized a little bit. Make sure that there's nothing completely out of the out of order here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. So now let's line these up with the boxes that these are going to go into and crop them down as we see necessary. There we go. All right, so I'll use my crop button up here, crop it down towards the film strip, crop it in towards that frame right there and turn off my crop. That's looking pretty good. Let's put the next one in there. Okay, crop it in from the right, up from the bottom. Now it looks like I've got a little bit hanging off in this other one here. Let me just trim that up. As you can see, as I'm resizing this last one, I am lining it up just perfectly with the end of the film strip over there. I don't want to hang off uh, anything by accident. And again, click on the first uh, picture, hold down shift, click on the rest of them. And then just go up here and click on compress pictures. You want it to delete the cropped areas of the picture, apply to these pictures, and, and you know maybe trim it down to 220 pixels per inch to reduce the file size significantly. Finally, simply go to the send backward drop down menu and tell it to send to the back. And now we have a beautiful little frame that holds on to all the different pictures. I'm gonna zoom out just a bit so I can see this a little better. Highlight all the elements simultaneously and use the keyboard shortcut control G, which groups them together. This makes it much harder to break things up and accidentally do something that, that messes up the flow. And now we can click onto the film strip, hit control D to duplicate it, and then slide it off to the side over here and just sort of tap it on to the end. Lovely. Make sure that there's no gap there. Make sure there's no weirdness in alignment or anything like that. Uh, make sure to align their middles. Okay. And once again, click on the group on the right, hold down shift, click on the group on the left, and hit control G to group them together. That grouping process simplifies your life and makes it harder to mess things up. So definitely always remember to group all those elements together. What's left now is to build a perfect animation that not only cycles these from a right to left, but also continually does it throughout the course of the slide. So we go up to the animations tab at the top of the screen and the thing we're looking for is the motion path from right to left. I'll go here to motion paths on this little drop down menu. Choose the option that says left right here and then click OK. Now, this by default is not nearly long enough. You can see there's a green dot here representing the beginning of the animation, red dot representing the end of the animation. Click and hold on that red dot and pull it to the side while holding down the shift key to keep them locked in place. And just keep dragging until two pictures that are the same line up with one another just like that. Now you'll want to test this out to make sure it's perfect, but that's basically what you're going for there. In this case, it's really easy for me to line up the lightning storm with the lightning storm and make sure that they're going to end up in the same place. Now up here at the top of the screen, I click on the drop down menu that says on click. Let's just go ahead and have it start as the slide loads up with previous. And this is a long strip, so it probably needs to take something like, I don't know, 15 or 18 seconds, something like that. 
But I need to go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to click on the Animation Pane button up at the top of the screen and open up the Effect Options. So right here under Effect Options, you can see here that when I have an 18 second animation, PowerPoint thinks it's going to be helpful and have it start slowly and speed up and then slow back down over nine seconds both ways. I don't want that to happen because this film strip should look like it is never ending. It never slows up down, it never speeds up. So the smooth start goes down to zero, the smooth end goes down to zero. And when I go to the timing tab up here at the top, I definitely want to make sure that it repeats infinitely until the slide is over. Then click OK. And let's just go ahead and start the presentation and see what happens. So as you can see, there's a little hiccup right when it loads up just because of uh, how much stuff is running on my laptop and things like that. But as it goes across, I want you to pay attention to the fact that at some point or another, it must go back around to the beginning, showing that very first series of pictures again. And really you can't see that, right? It's just a never ending stream. Now, if your processor's a little slow, if you got a lot of stuff running on your machine, if you happen to be recording a screen capture, maybe there'll be little skips and stuff like that, but it's really about um, the machine itself not being able to keep up with that smooth animation. As you can see there though, it is a beautiful, smooth, repetitive animation that we can then have lots of conversations around.